Reaction Reactions, and I have a special guest with me today. I'm Miss Backus, and with me today is... Is Asher. So we're going to talk about precipitation reactions. Let's get started. So here we have three reactions that we're going to look at today, and the first one we did in class if you were here for the demo, but we're going to use that as another example today. So I have lead to nitrate aqueous, so it's dissolved in water, and sodium iodide aqueous, and that's dissolved in water also. And when we mix them together, we can have them switch partners. So I have a positive and a negative, and in solution I have another positive and another negative. So when they're in solution, they can switch partners. So Asher, the lead 2, instead of going with the nitrate, what could it go with it instead? Well, that could go with the other negative, iodide. So we could have lead 2 iodide. And then I have nitrate. What could it go with instead of lead, too? Well, could that go with the other positive, sodium? Yeah, that's right. So it could go with the other positive. So this positive now could go with this negative, and this positive could go with this ne negative. And I have to be careful when I write this not to write nitrate first, because we always write the positive one first. So I'm going to write this as sodium nitrate. Now, still leaving off something important is what happens to this when they find each other in solution? Are they soluble? Are they going to float around? Or are they going to precipitate and stick together? And to do that, I'm going to use these solubility rules that you have in class in the, your appendix. Uh, I believe it's appendix A2 in the back of your problem book. So here we have the appendix, and I'm going to look up lead to iodide and sodium nitrate. So iodides, Asher, is that going to form a solid or not? Well, in this case, it is going to form a solid because they are not soluble. Excellent. So this becomes a solid, and that's my precipitate, and we abbreviate that as PPT. And then what about sodium nitrate? Is that going to be a solid or not? All nitrates are soluble, so it's just going to dissolve all over again. So it's just going to float around. So, I started with lead to nitrate, that was floating around in solution, sodium iodide was floating around in solution, but when the lead found the iodide, it stuck together and made a precipitate. The sodium and nitrate are still floating around in solution. Alright, got that? We do, great. Let's try the next one. I have magnesium chloride, it's aqueous, so it's floating around in solution separately. I have potassium phosphate, it is aqueous, it's floating around in solution separately. And so I, once again, can switch partners. I have a positive and negative, and a positive and a negative, so they can switch partners. So magnesium is going to go with what now? It's just going to take the phosphate. It's going to go with the phosphate. So I'm going to write magnesium phosphate. And, oops, notice I, I didn't even realize I was off the sheet there. So sorry if I you didn't see the end of the last one. So the magnesium is going to go with the phosphate. What's the chloride going to go with? The chloride can just go with the potassium. All right, and I remember to write the potassium first. So potassium chloride. All right, so once again, I have to see if either of these are solids or precipitate. So what about that phosphate? They're insoluble unless they're covered by rule one. But in this case, it isn't. It isn't. So magnesium phosphate is our precipitate, and that's our solid. And what about potassium chloride? Well, potassium chloride is also insoluble. Oops. Let's look carefully at that. Potassium chloride, chlorides are soluble except for those of silver and lead. So I think it is soluble. Oh, no. <laughs> but that's okay is soluble. There we have it. We have magnesium phosphate and potassium chloride. So I started with magnesium chloride floating around separately, potassium phosphate floating around separately, but when the magnesium found the phosphate, that lapse energy was so strong that they stayed together as a solid, and then we have potassium chloride still floating around separately. Let's do one last one, okay, Asher? All right. All right, so I have iron 3 acetate floating around separately, and calcium bromide floating around separately, a positive and a negative, and a positive and negative. They're going to switch partners again, so what does the iron 3 go with? The iron 3 is now going to go with the bromide. So I have iron 3 bromide, plus, what's the acetate going to go with? The calcium. So then I have calcium acetate. So now, once again, I have to look up on my sheet, and let's look at those bromides. They're soluble except for silver and lead. So what about... We're not about, using silver or lead. We're not using silver or lead, so that must be 
soluble. And what about calcium acetate? That's an easy one because of our acetate rule. And they're all soluble. They're all soluble. So calcium acetate is soluble. Oh my goodness. Look this time, Asher. We have an aqueous solution, an aqueous solution, an aqueous solution, and an aqueous solution. So we won't get a precipitate. So we don't get a precipitate. In fact, when we mix these together, it looks like nothing happens. And that's because nothing happens. These are floating around separately. These are floating around separately. At the end, they're still all floating around separately. So we can also call this NR for no reaction. So nothing happens that time. So just because I write it down doesn't mean I always get a precipitate. That's correct. All right, Asher, I really appreciate you helping me out with this. I really appreciate you having me. All right, and thanks for listening.